the United States military has always maintained flexibility and adaptability in its arsenal. By incorporating F-15EX Eagles into the mix, the Air Force retains a versatile and potent air supremacy capable of handling various operational needs. The new upgraded fighter comes with a range of new weapons and flight capabilities that rival modern stealth aircraft. The F-15 has a long and proven track record, making it a dependable choice. Pilots and ground crews are already well-versed in its operation and maintenance, reducing the learning curve and ensuring a smooth transition to the F-15EX. Since the newest version of the F-15EX has been announced, people from around the world have expressed their shock and fascination. Join us as we delve into the journey of the new upgraded F-15X-3 that shocked Russia and NATO countries. On February 2, 2021, a new generation of the Eagle, known as the F-15EX Eagle II, took to the skies. It's a remarkable story of rejuvenation for a machine that's nearly 50 years old. Though it's a fourth-generation fighter, the F-15EX has undergone extensive modernization, incorporating advanced technologies that bridge the gap between fourth- and fifth-generation capabilities. These upgrades enable the jet to meet the evolving demands of modern warfare. The U.S. Air Force welcomed its first F-15EX fighter from the Boeing plant in St. Louis on March 10th. The official unveiling of this beauty happened on April 8th at the Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. All of this was made possible through a substantial $1.2 billion contract with Boeing, who were tasked with developing this fighter and setting up an entire production line to keep them rolling out. By April 2021, the U.S. Air Force had received its second F-15EX, and fast forward to this year, 2023, we already have four of these sleek machines up and running. Two more are slated for production before the year wraps up. These eight prototype aircraft will hang out at the Eglin Air Force Base, where they'll undergo more rounds of testing. The big picture here is that by 2025, a total of 64 F-15X Eagle IIs will be delivered to the U.S. Air Force. It was in 2018 that the idea of modernizing the F-15 for the U.S. Air Force started to take shape. The inspiration for this move came from Russia, which had successfully developed advanced modifications of its MiG-29 and Su-27 aircraft. The U.S. decided to build on the foundation of the export twin engine FMFNK, initially designed for wealthy Qatar. Qatar acquired 36 of these fighters in 2017 for a whopping 6.17 billion, which didn't even include the costs of pilot training and logistical support. The F-15EX Eagle II, as it's known, integrates features from previous iterations, such as the F-15SA for Saudi Arabia, but takes them to a whole new level. This modernized fighter combines the capabilities of the F-15D combat trainer and the F-15E strike aircraft, and it's available in both single-seat and two-seat variants. The two-seat version incorporates a pilot operator whose responsibilities include controlling and analyzing information related to tactical ground and air situations and prioritizing target distribution. This addition significantly boosts the combat effectiveness of the F-15EX, surpassing that of the F-35A, especially in complex tactical scenarios where the theater of war is saturated with enemy air defenses and electronic warfare. Furthermore, the F-15EX boasts impressive flight capabilities. It can climb to an altitude of 60,000 feet and has undergone structural modifications to reduce its radar visibility and effective dispersion area. A robust fuselage and wing structure, coupled with new F-110 GE-129 engines from General Electric Aviation, generating 29,000 pounds of thrust, provide it with excellent maneuvering characteristics. Moreover, the F-15EX offers some impressive aerodynamics, with a rating of 9.2 to 10 units compared to 8.8 .8 units in the F-35A. Its low wing loading of 0.6 pounds per square inch and a digital electronic remote control system enable flight with increased angles of attack. 
In close combat, its steady-state turning angular rate at low altitudes can reach 22 to 23 degrees, allowing the pilot to engage effectively with most fourth and fifth generation fighters. Boeing, the manufacturer behind the F-15EX, has certified the airframe for an impressive 20,000 flight hours. To put this in perspective, earlier versions of the F-15 required maintenance after just 5,000 hours of operation. This new fighter is quite the marvel when it comes to performing maneuvers, too. It can handle a gravity-defying overload of nine units, but what makes it even more impressive is its cutting-edge airborne electronic equipment. This equipment is built on the concept of a digital highway, with an open architecture known as Open Mission Systems. It also has a Raytheon APG-82 radar with active electronically scanned array or AESA technology. The Raytheon APG-82 AESA radar is a game changer. It's capable of simultaneously detecting, identifying, and tracking multiple airborne and surface targets, and it does this at significantly longer ranges than its predecessor, the APG-70. We're talking ranges that stretch from 110 to 140 miles. This capability is a game changer because it enables continuous target surveillance and information sharing well beyond what the enemy might consider their kill zone. One radar station on the F-15E with the APG-82 is a powerhouse, as it can simultaneously detect and engage multiple targets. According to Brad Jones, Boeing's Director of Modernization Programs for the U.S. Air Force, it's as effective as having multiple mechanically scanned radar stations. But the improvements continue beyond there. The APG-82 radar surpasses its predecessor, the APG-70, by more than 20 times in terms of reliability. This significant upgrade ensures the F-15EX is equipped with some of the most dependable radar technology in the skies. Furthermore, the new Eagle comes outfitted with an ALQ-250 Eagle Passive Active Warning and Survivability System, which is a crucial element for modern warfare. It's also got a state-of-the-art communication system designed for joint operations with the F-35. This means that the F-15DX can seamlessly integrate with other aircraft in a highly coordinated and effective manner. Now, things have gotten pretty interesting since the F-15EX and F-15X are getting a digital cockpit that features larger displays measuring a substantial 11 by 19 inches. This is a big deal because it enhances the pilot's situational awareness, allowing them to process various sources of information in real time. The open architecture aspect of the digital backbone makes it adaptable and future-proof, ensuring that the F-15EX can keep up with evolving technologies and operational needs. Speaking of operational needs, the F-15EX is set to be a key player in the U.S. tactical fighter fleet. It's going to complement the existing fifth-generation fighters and bring its unique set of capabilities to the table. One notable capability is the ability to carry hypersonic weapons, marking a significant shift in its role, particularly in potential future peer-to-peer -peer conflicts. For instance, one hypersonic weapon on the radar is the Raytheon Tactical Glide Boost Hypersonic Air-to-Surface Missile, a $63 million wonder. This missile has a planned warhead that can accelerate to Mach 5 and boasts a launch range of 570 miles. The experts are optimistic that this compact marvel could potentially be mounted on frontline aircraft, though it's not expected in service before 2025. It's worth noting that American programs to develop hypersonic weapons have encountered their fair share of challenges, so timelines can be fluid. Another option in the hypersonic arena is the AGM-183A ARRW, or Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon from Lockheed Martin. It's a speedy one, accelerating to Mach 6.5 to 8, and designed to target ground-based and naval threats. Its launch range extends up to 500 mils. The ARRW is on the verge of deployment, set to be launched from carriers as early as 2022, although this timeline has faced delays. After all these upgrades, the U.S. Air Force has other grand plans. 
They expect to get their hands on anywhere from 144 to 200 of these F-15EX-2, and the production program is ringing in at a hefty $23 billion. Looking further down the road, they intend to purchase 18 to 24 of these fighters each year. It's a sizable investment and makes one wonder why they are investing so much into this new jet. Well, the logic behind this decision is as solid as steel. In the 90s, the Pentagon had visions of the U.S. Air Force transitioning to more modern fifth-generation aircraft in the early 21st century. They pinned their hopes on the F-22 Raptor, but that jet is very expensive. The costs of producing and operating it were through the roof. An hour of operation for the F-22, when you factor in all the associated costs, would set you back a whopping $44,259. Comparatively, an hour of operation for the trusty old F-15 Eagle, which was meant to replace the Raptor, is a mere $27,000. That's quite a significant difference. Also, the F-15 is reliable and does not need overly complex maintenance. The issues with the F-22 don't stop at the cost either. These planes aren't authorized for long flights and must always stay within reach of runways for emergency landings. Some bases, like those in Alaska, are a no-go for the Raptor due to the risk of unrecoverable failures in the onboard oxygen generation system. These issues have led to pilot complaints of suffocation and foul odors in the cockpit, hardly the kind of experience you'd want at 30,000 feet. That's a big reason why the F-22 is restricted from flying above 25,000 feet. It all adds up, and in the end, the F-22 Raptor program got the chop for financial reasons. But the story doesn't end there. The F-35 Lightning II was expected to come to the rescue, but it's faced its own share of hiccups. This aircraft isn't fully operational yet. One of its notable drawbacks is its inability to cruise at supersonic speeds without using an afterburner. Additionally, the F-35C, the deck-based version of the F-35, can't sustain supersonic flight. There's also the issue of what seems to be a recurring problem in these advanced aircraft, similar to the Raptor. F-35 pilots have reported symptoms that suggest oxygen deprivation, complaints of dizziness, tingling fingers, and disorientation. It's far from the ideal situation, especially when you're soaring through the skis on a critical mission. So, you might wonder, what's the U.S. Air Force to do with this mix of aircraft? According to the Military Balance Handbook, the Air Force currently operates approximately 100 older F-15Cs and about 220 newer F-15Es. In addition to these, there are roughly 165 combat-ready F-22As. The National Guard has a fleet of about 140 F-15Cs and 20 F-22As as well. Now let's take a closer look at the condition of this fighter fleet. The F-15C, the older of the two F-15 variants, is showing its age and is nearing the end of its service life. On the other hand, the F-22A, a formidable fighter, was discontinued from production a decade ago. The expectation for a full-fledged replacement with the necessary capabilities, like the promising next-generation air dominance, NGAD, fighter, is on the horizon, but expected to materialize at the end of this decade. The fighter aircraft situation is a bit of a mixed bag for the U.S. Air Force. Other fighters in their arsenal, such as the older F-16C and the more recent F-35A, are highly effective in frontline bomber roles but come up short when it comes to pure fighter capabilities. The F-16C is also heading towards obsolescence, and the production schedule for the modern F-35A is lagging behind expectations. The F-15EX brings a remarkable array of capabilities to the table, and it's turning heads in the world of fighter aircraft. What's particularly fascinating is the aircraft's versatility when it comes to hosting hypersonic or anti-satellite weaponry. It can carry up to 28 small-diameter bomb-type correctable aerial bombs, perfect for taking out radar installations and small targets. Moreover, it boasts an impressive total payload capacity of 29,500 pounds. 
To put that into perspective, Russia's most advanced fourth-generation fighter, the Su-35S, can only carry up to 17,600 pounds, and the Eurofighter Typhoon comes in at 16,500 pounds. Also, we must understand that the F-15EX is bringing a whole new level of capabilities to the table. Its primary role is to serve as a platform for hypersonic systems, making it a formidable addition to the Air Force's arsenal. While it may not quite match fifth-generation aircraft in terms of stealth, it's more than capable in combat scenarios. The idea is that it will complement the F-35. The F-35 can only carry four air-to-air -air missiles, like the AIM-120 AMRAAM, in its internal compartments. The designers are working on expanding this to six, but that's still quite modest compared to the new Eagle. The F-35A also boasts a top speed range of 1,150 to 1,180 miles per hour. The F-15EX, on the other hand, can reach speeds of 1,400 to 1,500 miles per hour with a maximum combat load. Additionally, it's equipped with three suspended fuel tanks, which give it an impressive range of up to 1,500 kilometers. When you pair this with the APG-82V radar, it transforms the F-15EX into a long-range interceptor. In fact, operating alongside the F-35, it can potentially achieve a range of up to 3,000 miles. The F-15EX will be equipped with the SACMT Airborne Anti-Missile System to enhance its defense capabilities. This system is designed to intercept incoming air-to-air -air missiles that threaten F-35s. Its gas dynamic torque control engines and a millimeter wave action radar homing head make it particularly effective. This radar can intercept most small-sized air attack means, including anti-aircraft guided missiles, portable anti-aircraft systems, and air-to-air -air missiles like the Russian R-8, R-33, R-37, or Chinese PL-5, PL-7, PL-9, PL-10, PL-11 missiles. This means that just one F-15EX or F-15X assigned to a group of F-35s can carry up to 32 of these missiles. It is quite the defensive capability, allowing it to thwart multiple missile attacks from enemy fighters or air defenses. The Russian Space Force and the Chinese Air Force currently don't possess this capability. The F-15EX sticks to tradition for close combat situations with a 20mm M61A1 Vulcan high-speed rotary barrel cannon. It has a 500-round capacity and packs a lot of power in close-range engagements. With all these capabilities, Boeing is eyeing international exports for the F-15EX, and there's already considerable interest from the air forces of Bahrain, Israel, Italy, and Singapore. These countries recognize the remarkable combination of high technical capabilities and low costs that the F-15EX offers. Naturally, countries like Russia will be threatened by this development since they are in a keen race with the USA for aerial dominance. Russian Su-57E is the country's most advanced fighter, may not even be able to take on the newly upgraded F-15IX jet. Indeed, the Cu-57 is a fifth-generation stealth fighter aircraft engineered to excel in a wide range of combat scenarios, whether they involve land, air, or sea targets. It's also equipped with advanced avionics, stealth technology, supercruise capability, and the flexibility to carry an extensive range of weapons for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. The fighter reaches supersonic speeds while maintaining its stealth and minimizing heat signatures, all thanks to its cutting-edge stealth technology and composite materials like polymers, fiberglass, and aluminum honeycomb fillers. The Isdelier 117 and AL-41F1 improved turbofan engines are powering this advanced performance. Later versions of the Su-57 will feature the new Isdelier 30 engine. This would give the aircraft a range of up to 2,200 miles at subsonic speeds and the ability to reach Mach 2 without requiring afterburners. To enhance maneuverability, the Su-57 employs 3D thrust vectoring nozzles, a feature that's key to fifth-generation aircraft. 
The Su-57 is also packed with state-of-the-art avionics systems that automate tasks and provide intelligent support to the crew. Its onboard electronics include an electronic co-pilot, a powerful onboard computer, and advanced internal weapon storage. Among the remarkable avionics systems on board are the active electronically scanned array radar and electronic intelligence systems. Regarding armament, the Su-57 carries air-to-air -air missiles for long-range aerial combat and air-to-surface missiles for engaging ground targets. It's also equipped with 30mm air cannons for close-quarters combat. What's truly impressive is that its two substantial internal weapon compartments can each carry up to four K-76 7M air-to-air missiles. However, the real game-changer in this scenario is the RVV-MD-2, a unique close-range air-to-air missile designed explicitly for the Su-57 fighter. This innovative weapon has earned the title of One of a Kind. Russian sources even claim that with this development, Russia has established a significant 5-10 to ten year lead over the United States in the development of fifth-generation air-to-air missiles. We haven't seen it in action, so we only have the claims to fall back on. Still, the RVV MD-2 represents an upgraded version of the short-range air-to-air missile RVV-M. It's designed to engage a wide range of airborne threats, including fighters, attack planes, bombers, helicopters, and military transport aircraft. Its ability to operate effectively even in challenging electronic countermeasures environments makes it truly remarkable. It features an inertial control system that enhances its accuracy during flight by autonomously navigating based on its previous position. Additionally, it incorporates a radio correction line to further refine target coordinates. With a dual-band infrared homing head and improved noise immunity, it can effectively engage targets from various angles, even those behind the launching aircraft. While no definitive evidence confirms the deployment of Su-57 units in Ukraine, reports suggest that these fighter jets may have been involved in the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The deployment was reportedly initiated approximately two to three weeks after the start of the Russian invasion on February 24, 2022. However, this information remains unverified. If only the jet could be caught in action, it would provide an opportunity to evaluate the aircraft's capabilities and weapon systems in actual combat scenarios. It's a chance to determine whether the Su-57 can compete with American-made counterparts like the F-22 and F-35. Then, we could compare it with the new F-15 EX-2 as well. Whatever the case, the truth remains that the F-15 EX is set to play a pivotal role in the evolving landscape of aerial warfare, bringing a range of new capabilities and substantial advantages to the table. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.